Dr. Isaac Bogosh is back. He's an infectious disease specialist at Toronto General. He's a member of Ontario's COVID-19 vaccine distribution task force. He's given us two hours of his very valuable time because we have questions, Dr. Bogosh, for, from our viewers. Uh, welcome back. Watching Good Ottawa? Were you watching those moments in Ottawa? Pretty oh, exciting. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Come on, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And you know well, what's wonderful, too, is personal oh, no, go ahead, support sorry. workers. The, oh, it's the personal support workers. I mean, they've been working like stink in some of the hardest settings since the very beginning. We know that long-term care facilities have just been, unfortunately, just ravaged by this virus. It's awful to watch. And the, the nursing staff and personal support care staff in these facilities, are they're heroes. I mean, they've been on the front lines in some of the hardest uh, impacted places. And it's, it's just wonderful to see them get the vaccination first. Acknowledged as such. People watching, I mean, this is obviously drumming up enthusiasm. And we have questions from viewers about getting the vaccine. So Zen, for example, and Colleen. Colleen is wondering about how to make arrangements for her mother. But Zen has some particular questions for he, uh, for himself and his wife in Hamilton. They're in their 70s. So how will they know when they're due to get the vaccine, Dr. Bogosh? That's a great point. So there's going to be a lot of communication from the province on how these plans are going to unfold. And currently, it's not available to the general public, right? We have a very, very limited supply. So the very limited supply that's being that we have is going to be prioritized for the highest priority of the high priority group, which is ultimately those who live and work in long-term care. We're even starting with those who work in long-term care, not those who live in long-term care, because this is such an unstable uh, product. You can't really move it around that much. And, you know, we'll probably start to see it moved into these facilities at some point when we get a, a green light from, from the company. But not many places in the world are actually administering it in the facilities themselves, although this might change with time. What I'm trying to say here is as we get more and more access to vaccines, either the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine, you're going to start to see uh, vaccine distribution centers pop up across the province. And when those vaccine distribution centers pop up across the province, you're going to start to see more information about how priority groups can get vaccinated. So this is all coming with time. There's, it's only The program has only been running for less than 24 hours. So I think they've got to, people have to give it a little bit of time before we get more product and uh, more centers popping up. Just so Zen understands, we're talking now uh, <clears throat> residents and workers in long-term care facilities frontline health care workers, people over the age of 80, people in remote Indigenous communities. These are the four priority groups right now. We're not even talking general public, are we, until April is the, is the target at this point. You, you raise your eyebrows, maybe, you know, depending yeah. on shipments and supply and everything like that. But that's what we're talking about for general population, April of 2021. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. I mean, we have a very limited supply. We're only expected to get uh, a quarter of a million doses of this vaccine throughout the country by the end of this year and while every little bit counts that's a, just a tiny fraction of what we're actually going to need so we're many of the provinces are basically designing systems so that we target the highest most high yield long-term care facilities uh, for example in in high risk zones to really prioritize those populations first so that that's certainly what we're seeing in ontario and that's very likely what's happening across the country paul kerr's question dr bogosh for someone with pre-existing conditions such as atrial fibrillation diabetes or congestive heart failure how do you make sure that this is considered for covid19 Yes, certainly uh, we know that people with medical comorbidities are at greater risk of having a severe outcome of this infection. And uh, basically, uh, when, we, when you take a step back and look at what the provinces are doing, they're all really adhering to the federal guidance. So there's a federal guidance document, the NACI document, which outlines who should get this vaccine first. And you haven't seen any provinces really veer too far from that. The interesting thing is that's the top priority. Then we have to think about once everyone in that top priority is vaccinated, how do you get that second tier of people. So that, that, that's a lot of people. And, you know, you can think of people who would be at greatest risk of getting the infection as well. So front facing uh, workers, so people that work in grocery stores, police officers, uh, paramedics, teachers, you know, there's a lot of people that could be on that list. And I think that's going to be a big challenge as we have more and more access to vaccine to really ensure that 
those communities are prioritized. Okay. Carmen has a question. We had an allergist on at the beginning of the program, Dr. Bogosh, and we talked about food, environmental allergies, medications, but we didn't address this. Uh, Carmen wonders if he's had an allergic reaction, anaphylactic shock, to the dye contrast from a CT scan. Can he get the vaccine? That's a very, uh, yeah, it's very likely that that individual will get, will be able to get the vaccine. So uh, the, there's actually very few ingredients in the vaccine and, and the products, the components of the vaccine are, are publicized. So you can see exactly what makes up this vaccine. And really, you shouldn't get this vaccine if you have an allergy to any one of those components. So it's actually pretty straightforward to look up what you have an allergy to and what the components of the vaccine are and see if any of these align. Okay, and, and if, uh, if, if you know, none, of the, none of the ingredients in the CT scan uh, were in the contrast were on that list, he should be okay. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Couple and there they are. Perfect. There they are. Yeah, just, just as a... On demand. A couple of quick ones before we go, both of which we've talked about, but they keep coming back from viewers, so obviously these are on Canadians' minds. Karen wondering about should pregnant women, should they get this vaccination? Fascinating question. And it's interesting, when you look at the U.S. documents, the U.S. documents say, listen, we don't know, we don't have the data for this. This is a discussion that you should have with your primary health care provider. You should have be empowered to make the choice. The Canadian documents are a little more stern. They basically say pregnant women should not get the vaccine. However, you can discuss this and weigh the risks and benefits with a healthcare provider to see if maybe you should get the vaccine. So the wording is slightly different. In Canada, at the end of the day, pregnant women still can get this vaccine in Canada. But when you look at the actual wording, it says they probably shouldn't unless you have a good reason to do it and unless you really weigh the pros and cons with a healthcare provider about this. So it's, it's a bit of a nuance, actually, that's really important. I, I, I really recommend people read that document to, to see the wording in Canada. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I think we're going to see pregnant women get this vaccine here. Okay. And, and finally, there is one vaccine approved presently in Canada, the Pfizer-BioNTech we're talking about so much. Moderna next to come online. Uh, then we're talking about Oxford, AstraZeneca. And then we're talking about Johnson & Johnson, J&J. &J. So there are a number of vaccine candidates in the pipeline, Dr. Bogosh. Here Here's a question. We'll be able to, will we be able to choose which one we get? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. At least I don't think up front. Like, while there's still tremendous scarcity, I think this is going to be the situation where whatever product is available when, you're, when your number is called, that's what you're going to get. Uh, but I think as we move on, and if we're sort of thinking about the latter part of the 2021 calendar year, we might have several different products. Uh, available and and when we're in a situation where anyone who wants one can get one and there's lots available on the market maybe you will be able to choose but i don't think that's going to happen anytime soon all right as always we so appreciate your time with us and your expertise thank you dr bogosh see you soon my pleasure have a good day